Indeed, uh, we are all uh, thankful that we have witnessed a new day. Uh, this is the uh, blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are, inshallah, going to start this program. Uh, this is the Sira conference that is uh, organized by the uh, Ikna Tarbiya Department. Uh, the theme of the of this uh, uh, would be the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent with a mission. Sheikh uh, Iqbal Nadavi. I'll give you a quick introduction to Sheikh Nadavi. He uh, has a master's and a PhD in Sharia from uh, Umm Al Qara University in Makkah, which is a very famous university. And before that, he uh, went through Nadwatul Ulama, so he has an Adim Adim degree there, and also he has received Ijaza, which is the permission to give fatwa from many renowned scholars. He also has a degree in political science. And so one last uh, bit is that is the current Amir of uh, ICNA Canada. Uh, since we are short on time, so I'll stop here and I'll ask uh, Dr. Nadvi to uh, inshallah continue his topic, which is the how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam touched the hearts. So Dr. Nadvi, you're online. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <coughs> Just one correction. I am I was Amir of Canada, but not now, not current Amir. So first of all, Jazakumullah Khair for arranging this uh, conference. Even we are not able to physically attend it, but at least we can connect ourselves with uh, these kind of facilities available second thing i am grateful for inviting me to speak in this conference it honor ali it is a very great moment for us to remember rasulullah so inshallah i will talk uh, in the light of one ayah and uh, one hadith the ayah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he appointed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, it was uh, a, a response of dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa sallam. Uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam when he founded the house of Allah Kaaba with the help of his son. After completing he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala two requests. One is to Allah whatever I'm doing. I'm trying to do it sincerely, but it is you who will accept it. So Rabbana taqabbal minna. I'm asking you to accept it. Second thing, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana wabas fihim rasulam minhum, yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yuallimuhum al-kitaba wa al-hikmata wa yuzakkihim. Oh Allah, I, I did foundation, but I need a person who come and complete this mission. So oh Allah, appoint a person who will be, uh, who do two, four, points agenda of mission he will teach people kitab he will recite quran book of allah and then he will teach the meaning of it and then he will teach them the wisdomful way for example to live in this world and also he will purify their hearts and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he accepted and then he remember reminded people muslimin all humanity but reminded muslims لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَسَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمْهُمْ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, yes, I am accepting your dua and I am appointing a person and he will do this job in a very, very complete manners, in a very profounded manners. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Rasulullah was, uh, was, was living in, the, in his time and his mission started after 40 years his age and he became prophet. So he spent his 13 years in Mecca developing people, conveying the message and training the people, changing their hearts and making them a better human being. And we need, for example, in the 13 years time he was focusing on Correcting 
the the ideology correcting the meaning of everything taking the right side of life and avoiding the bad side because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created our hearts it, it is capable to do good or to choose bad but the one who purified himself or herself he is the successful or she is the successful so rasulullah sallam focus on developing peoples and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in quran Ya illazina amanu istajibu lillahi wa al-rasooli za da'akum lima yuhiyikum. O people, respond and show your positive response to the, the call of Allah and His Messenger, which is really a source of your real life, eternal life. So Rasulullah was giving a real life beside our physical life. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He said, uh, in Quran, we never created two hearts in any person's body. So it means what? It means that heart is only one. And this heart only one means not only in physical term or medical term. It means that this heart is capable to keep only one idea, one ideology, one concept, or you can say one aqidah. So coming to the other uh, the, uh, uh, yani, you know, reference from Hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There is a one organ in our body. If it is become cured, it become healthy, then whole body will be cured, will be healthy, and will be, you know, solid and really working functioning in a very right way so understanding the point of the skia and connecting with our heart if i say for example our body is governed by three major leaders or governors or controllers one is our mind mind is our controller mind is a source of you know guiding lot of you know intellectual thing a lot of uh, rational thing a lot of logical things and our sexual desire or of our you know stomach desires we have a, some kind of desires we want to fill our stomach with everything we like we consider it tasty we consider it as good and also we have our human desire so we want to fulfill it in any means if we make our mind our leader it will guide the body but sometime it will crush the other side of body which may be, for example, emotions, which may be some kind of, you know, sentiments. If we make our sex work in our stomach, in a organ as a leader, it will drag us to our going, the, going to lower to lower, going down and down. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ We created human body, and this body is capable to be the highest of the highest. But it, when it is lose its real position, direction, it goes lower of the lower, lowest of the lowest. So how we, we, can, we can do it? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advised us and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa explained to us that if you control or you give the control of your body to your heart. In physical term, of course, the heart is only organ which is functioning 24 hours and it is serving whole body without any discrimination so it is surviving its own thing but it is giving the real way for example to survive all organs without any discrimination and giving every organ a portion which needed by it that that organ it means what it means for example if the control of the heart is coming in in a for example for heart it will justify and it will give due respect to every organ this is of course we can understand it but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained to us that this organ is not only related to your physical body, it is related to your soul. And your soul is totally different kind of need. Its nourishment is nutrition, is a disease, it kind of health is totally different. So if your heart become the heart of Iman, it become heart filled with Iman, then this will not only lead your body in the right direction, but it will lead under the real spiritual guidance, real guidance given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by revealed science to his 
chosen people, the prophets and Ambiya and Rasul. So in that sense, we can understand the Tazkiya of this, uh, the, 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 the heart is most important part of our whole activity as individual and not only individual, but society as well. And this Tazkiya means two things. First thing, to choose the best and pure and clean and halal. Tazkiya means to take the pure, clean. And second thing is Tazkiya means also to increase. When you are taking some kind of you know, seed, good seed, so it means it will turn in a big tree, in a fruitful tree. So in that sense, the Tazkiya is really a source of changing the mind and hearts of people. How it happened? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the Muzakki. The real Muzakki is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Wallah yuzakki man yasha. It is in Allah's hand who will be, for example, qualified to get the purification. But he authorized Rasulullah to do this job on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this tazkiya is done by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we note that all those who were living around him, Sahaba and Sahabiyat and early days and later days, those who joined them, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned them totally and for, you can say reform them or you can say they they were just like a born again in real term with a new concept of human new concept of humanity new concept of mission and new con concept of islamic understanding of all this world and next world so if i for example <clears throat> go to i want to highlight two things first thing when rasulullah sallallahu sallam he was the muzakki what he did, he was reciting Quran, Tilawat, and he was teaching the meaning of Quran, Kitab, and he was giving him the wisdom, and he was doing Tazkiyah. All these things not only transferred to the those who were living in his time, but actually they were given all these four categories of you know knowledge or categories of masterly knowledge. And then they become source to purify others, to teach others, to recite the Quran in front of others. So he prepared one generation and he, for example, transformed them in a better human being. If you read, listen to the speech of Jafar ibn Abi Talib in the courtyard of, in the, for example, in the Najashi, when he said we were worshipping, we were killing, we were looting, we were committing sin, we were doing adultery and we are doing this and this and then the Rasul came and then we he asked us to start with our the mission of thing so then we become totally different people so these the generation of first the surah some time it is the source of all these teachings and not these teaching can you can say contained or limited to them but it is extended so generation after generation the whole function of these teachings continued and one of the, you can imagine that we have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored us with two things. Two protected and two, you can say, never going, for example, to, to be disappeared. Quran and Sunnah, it is, this always, it is existing. It never disappeared. Second thing is that the life of this Ummah. Rasulullah sallallahu when he developed, trained, educated, and he was Muallim, he said, Nama Buhastu Muallimun, he got, he teach them. And then he, he said, So you have a good khalq, you have a good creation, but I am coming you to fill the other side of your body and your, your noble body, khulq. So he was, he was giving them a manners, etiquettes, and all kind of example, you know, moralities. So in that sense, for example, how all these things happen in his time, and it become a life, you can say life time, living of these values not only in first generation but it become a generation after generation and this ummah never disappeared never lost as rasulullah sallallahu alaihi said the whole ummah will never be united under deviation so this ummah always carrying the haq and it is a source of haq so i want for example to uh, uh, to just uh, connect my point as i said the taskia Two points are very important. First thing, the Tazkiyah is usually individual. Yeah, the first purification come to our heart. But 
this individual tazkiyah of heart, it means that heart is charged. It is now filled with Iman. What it means? It means now that the job of organ, of heart, is to pump this kind of teaching, this kind of, you know, all things to other organs. So it means that individuals are getting tazkiyah, but in the lifetime of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we note that when he purified these people, they become also a brick of a purified society. They purified the whole society, the system. Their money become halal, their eating become halal, their sexual relation become halal, their social life become halal, their political system become halal and muzakki, muzakka, and their, for example, money, whatever you can say. So that tazkiyah is actually produced by Rasul Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and given to people by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And then this tazkiyah is not limited to individual purif purification only. It happens in our society sometimes we think tazkiyah is only some individual uh, purification. No, the tazkiyah means that when 10 bricks are clean, so it must build a building, also a building supposed to be purified, but be muzakka. This is the first point which is needed to understand our time. Second thing is very important that when this kind of personality developed under the light of training of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the light of Iman, the light of Quran and the Quranic teaching, what kind of personality must be, how it reflect. I focus on these things, few things. First thing, this personality is supposed to be Rabbani. I said, Kunu Rabbani yin. Allah subhanahu said, you are supposed to be Rabbani. And then what? He said, for example, you are, for example, you are supposed to be mercy for humanity. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, And he said, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he pointed Rasulullah as the mercy of humanity, this mercy of humanity is also reflecting in humanity for Muslim. The Muslim also must mercy of humanity. So they are, for example, coming as a, for example, servant, as a servant of deen, as a servant of humanity, and then they are reflecting their, their contribution of Islamic values on different levels. So just uh, try to understand that if I say they got one heart means one faith. So aqeedah, tawheedul, tawheedul illah, yani Allah is one. It is start from there. If I start from any other point, it will not work. In our time, we have a lot of solution. If I want to develop my country, I develop people. So say, teach them, give them good education, give them good living style, give them good, for example, so and so and so and so. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us that first is start with Iman. So if we start with oneness of Allah, then we move to other point, oneness of humanity. All human beings are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no any discrimination. There is no any differences, white and black and so on. La fadla li arabina la hajamiyan illa bi taqwa. As Quran says, inna khalaqna kum, jalna kum shu'uban wa qabari ta'arafu, inna akramakum inda Allah yatqaakum. So oneness of humanity. The third point which is this tazkiyah is giving us, oneness of advice or oneness of guidance. The source of guidance for humanity will be one, not hundred. Every religion, every path is leading to Allah, no. Only one path, a sirat al mustaqib in the deen and Allah al Islam. So, oneness of guidance, oneness of solution of humanity. Whatever problem we have, the solution is only one. And the fourth thing is oneness of destination. End result will be only one. And it is based on one guidance. So, if our living in the world was one way, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one only one source and then one guidance and then we get the one destination. These are the, for example, four categories of tazkiyah which is reflected in the first day of Rasulullah time and is reflecting up to now. Now I want to, for example, just like a, for example, if I say few more things about this issue. So when a person become Rabbani, so it means that this person is connecting its himself or herself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the takbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لِتُكَبِّرُ I am making everything lower than Allah. Everything is lower and greater, greatest is the greatest Allah. Takbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second thing is that my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking me 
to be nice to him and nice to relatives, nice to parents, nice to people, nice to neighbors, even, for example, dealing with and doing justice, not zul, doing, for example, all kind of, you know, for example, good values, not bad values. So, and supposed to be Rabbani, I am 24 hours Abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not part time Abd, not in my private life, not in every aspect of life, I am Rabbani. So it, it is, for example, one of the issues. The second thing, when I'm going there, so I am, when I have a one guidance, so I am proactive. Islam is not reactive. It is suppose, for example, we, we, when we have a market and we say 10 products are very popular, I can bring the 11th product because I want to defeat them. No, Islam is not defeating others. Islam is proactive. Islam is real solution. Whatever counterfeit, what is produced by others, it is actually reactive. Many times, for example, we don't understand this point, but we must understand that when we are doing some service of Islam, so Islam establishes own goals, Islam establishes own means, and also Islam establishes own way, for example, to achieve its target. We are not in competing others, and suppose, for example, we are uh, you know, following them or copying them. No, Islam gave us every standard's own way. So even living in good time, living in bad time, living in difficult time, it is the Islamic standard which is supposed to be followed. So we are, for example, proactive. Quran says, amalu, amalakum wa rasulu. You have to prove yourself with your own amal. Not, for example, criticizing others, not, for example, demolishing others' amal. No, making your own way, for example, to survive. The third issue is that this Muslim when it is purified, when it is, for example, produced, it is most advanced person, not backward person. In our most, uh, you know, our term, Islam is a backward religion. Muslim is backward. No, Islam is most advanced. Why? Because we are not thinking about this world. We are thinking about the next world, the non and their future, but the real future, which is, for example, waiting for us. And this is the reason why Islam is most advanced system and this, this is the reason why you can see that when Islam developed these people, how these people who were Ill illiterate, who were, they have no any experience. You can imagine the Sahaba, they have no any experience of bureaucracy. They have no experience of, for example, running a system, running a government. And, but you can see their history, how successful they were. Because they were connect, guide, take guidance from Islam, which is most modern, most updated. Most, for example, you say advanced level of Islamic teaching, which is not Islam, for example, is starting a historical thing. Human history started with a, you know, jungle or kind of a forest or, you know, for example, we learn many gods and then reduce it to one and then no, no God needed. No, it is not the evolution of God. It is the evolution of physical or material thing, not evolution of God. This is also very important that when we are, for example, working with the Islamic system, so our relation if I say that we have a two way to face the world, to live with world. One is we have rights, they have rights and we demand our rights. We are living in a country, especially in democratic country, we say our rights. So we are hukukiyin, yani we are defending our rights and we are fighting for it. Islam asked me before I, I demand my rights, I supposed to be the defender of haq. I supposed to be haqqani. My first category living in a society is to live with Haq. When I defend Haq and then I promote Haq and invite humanity to Haq, they will be not my enemies. They will not be my competitors, but they will be, they will be my madru, my invitees. If I am fighting for Haq, so then there will be conflict, there will be tussle, there will be a lot of kind of, you know, for example, taking or losing and so on. And then when we are living in this world, so my, my, for example, concern is Islah. I am not, for example, going with facade, with any kind of corruption. But my proposition is, uh, as Quran says, uh, Ma Shuaib alayhi salam quoted, salam quoted him, in uridu illa islaha mastata. My position is always taking care about Islah. What is good, I will maintain it. What is not, I will try to make it, to take it reform, to make Islah. So Islam is amal saleh. And amal, amal salih means three things. One is salih, which is accepted and approved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One is based on maslaha, which is always, we have any word, anything, 
which is mix of good and bad. But what is the better part of it? What is the majority part of it? So we will take maslaha. And also we take kind of, you know what, uh, some kind of what is suitable in our time. What is, for example, salahiyat? What is, for example, you know, for example, use for some time, one action is good in one time, but maybe other action is good another time. So how we, for example, value among them. So in that sense, the, our amal saleh is supposed to be our source to prove our point. And third thing is that Muslim, when they are doing thing, so they are caring about ikhlas of niya, they are caring about the sunnah. The sunnah, ittiba sunnah, following the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in every aspect of life. And then they are, for example, doing tawakkul on Allah, not tawakkul on asbab. We are taking care about asbab. We are depending on them. We are trusting it. We are using it. But we are not doing tawakkul. Many times it happens that when we lose every kind of hope, we think, oh, we have no any way. And you know, in these COVID days, when you see people, they are sometimes, they are desperate. They are, for example, they say, no, no way to, for example, live. They say, be, it is better to do suicide and so on. But Muslim always living with tawakkul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are even the time when they have no asbab, still they don't lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا مِحَيْسُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ was from where he cannot expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them. So I'm saying, for example, the, the, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he is the source of changing the heart of person. And when he taught us how we change our heart, we ask us now to make our, our body good and our whole society good. And it means, for example, now how we ask others, how we invite others to be this thing. So if this is a chain reaction which is started by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it is continued in our generation after generation and it will continue next time as well. So this is really a moment, especially after COVID, we can see that we are living first generation time was over, ideal time. But this ummah is still existing. Imam Malik, once he said, لا يسلح آخر هذه الأمة إلا بما سلوها به أولها If the later generation want to correct themselves, they have to follow same pattern which was accepted and adopted and approved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and advised by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in that sense, our next generation is actually on the same path which was adopted by first generation. And this is a moment, especially after COVID, as I'm saying, I can say that all kind of human made system are gone. It is now vacuum. And there's a moment when we, it is only opportunity for Muslim to fill it. But from what thing they will fill it? The purified thing. Not everything. We, for example, maybe we have our own system have contained many things. But what is purification? What is purified? And what is, for example, tahir? What is tayyib? And what is, for example, clean and healthy for body and soul? So then our job will be on the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As he said, innama bu'istum muyassireen. I am appointed and you are also appointed. And uh, Abdullah ibn Masood defined it. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he chose Nabi, he chose for him his companions. And this ummah is also, Rasul said, you are akhirul ummah. You are the last ummah. So in that sense, we supposed to do this thing as a muallim, as a muzakki, as a, as a um, makarim ul akhlaq, as a, for example, serving of haq, as a serving of justice. As a serving of example, you know, all kind of example, which is good for dunya and akhirah. So in this way, whatever Rasulullah sallallahu did it, and it is recorded in the generation time, first generation time, it recorded in books, it will be again revived in our practice, in our dawah, in our living style, and our mission to convey this message to others. And I hope, inshallah, these some points will help, inshallah, to understand our duty under the mission of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullahu khairan. Jazakumullahu khairan, Dr. Nadwi. Uh, very inspiring words, mashallah.